So Ron, perhaps I could begin by asking you to introduce yourself. My name is Roland Lafort. I'm the president of a local in Fort McMurray, Alberta, with the Communications, Energy and Paper Workers Union, uh, representing the workers in the tar sands. And it's obviously, it sounds like a, a, a difficult position to be in. You're representing um, workers whose jobs are dependent on the tar sands. So what's the position of your union? Well, uh, that's exactly right. Uh, we, we are in a kind of a tight spot. Um, as as uh, trade unionists, we're keepers of the land. You know, we share the same social values as all other workers across uh, across the world, and and all of civil society. We have those uh, same feelings of justice as everybody else. But we also um, represent workers, and um, workers that uh, earn a fairly decent way, uh, living up there, and. Um, we're here basically to talk about that and how we can find a balance between uh, the continuation of that work and still um, talk about um, how we make that work um, a better place for, for the planet. And can you just give us a sense of what the tar sands are, their scale and, and what the work involves? The tar sands is, uh, is a fairly um, big operation. Um, it's fairly new to most people. Um, we've started hearing about the tar sands in the last four or five years, uh, mainly because the price of oil has gone from you know the thirty dollars to the hundred and forty dollars at one point. Uh, certainly uh, precipitating uh, the development of those sands. Uh, but the plant that I work with, with uh, with uh, another thirty-three hundred members, uh, was created in 1967. So it was there for a long time, just sort of button away, mm -hmm. um, you know, when prices were at the $30 mark and it cost uh, $25 to produce. Um, so, but now it's a, it is a big, big operation and we certainly understand um, the pressures that are coming uh, towards the tar sand by the rest of the world. I mean, it is a big operation. And presumably, as well as benefiting from the tar sands, your workers will live locally and they witness the impacts of, of these tar sands as well. What kinds of impacts do you see? Uh, well, we don't, we don't really see the impacts up there. Um, you know, it's, they're mines, so like any other mines, um, those that see the mines are, and work in the mine see what, uh, what's happening. But, um, you know, it's a vast area. The, the biggest issue... Um, for people in Fort McMurray in the last uh, number of years is, is uh, the community growing and uh, trying to keep up with the infrastructure uh, for a community that went from 35,000 people to 90,000 people in, in seven or eight years. And we've heard scientists like um, James Hansen from NASA say that this is a carbon bomb and that if it goes off it will be game over for the climate. How do you, how do you respond to those kinds of comments? Well, I think uh, it is a carbon bomb if uh, left, um, you know, untouched. <laughs> if we don't, if we don't um, apply any kind of uh, restraints on on the whole system, uh, likely would be. Um, our union's position is is basically that we have to look at that. We have to look at um, first of all. Let me say that our union came out in 2002 and supported the Kyoto Protocol. We stood uh, with all of the people to say, yes, this has to happen. Uh, unfortunately, our message hasn't been heard by the Canadian government. Um, and, you know, we're seeing it again today, uh, where we're hearing that the Canadian government's going to pull out of Kyoto, and we're not too sure what they're doing with the uh, longer term uh, strategies. Um, so obviously, the governments um, haven't heard our position. And, uh, and we're here today to talk about that. You know, we interceded with the uh, ambassador for climate change to Canada, the chief negotiator, and, and told them that we as workers expect that Canada will be coming forward and, and uh, applying rules and ensuring that we're looking at the uh, kind of damages that, um, that the world is telling us we're doing. Um, you know, my members, um, although they earn a decent living, feel guilty um, just by hearing the pressures that the world is putting on on them as workers in the uh, in the oil sands, so we're trying to uh, to be here today to to talk about uh, the effects on the workers and uh, and understanding that it is uh, you know uh, 
an industry that is going to be under pressure, um, so much pressure that I personally believe that its life will be short, you know, that within the next um, 15 years that we will probably be walking away from the tar sands. Um, and with that being said, that we're talking to the government also uh, to start planning that strategy so that we have a transition process for our workers and for the community because uh, it's becoming a large community. You say you think that we'll be walking away from the tar sands within kind of 10, 15 years. Why is that? Is it due to pressure from environmentalists, due to economic reasons? Why? Well, I'm optimistic that we will find a different source of fuels for, for the planet. Um, and I, I, I don't think that uh, we're going to need that kind of, you know, uh, carbon that we're using now. Uh, mainly, um, I believe that we're going to change our ways around consumption you know, that we're using too much, um, too much fuel as it is. And, you know, the, the reason that the tar sands are popular and, the, and that uh, they're getting $90 a barrel for oil is that because we're using it and we're, we're demanding it. <clears throat> so I think that's going to change in the next few years. Um, and uh, I think that's going to give us the, you know, the start of the process for, uh, for doing the transition. So the Canadian government is really pushing this forward. Um, domestically and at an international level as well at the tar sands seem to be a big a big uh, interest for it. Do you really think they're going to turn around in that space of time? I think there's some, uh, there's some players uh, in the industry that uh, recognize the pressures of the world uh, and that are looking for uh, ways to uh, improve their, their uh, productions and, and their visibility around the world. Um, uh, so if we can get those uh, producers on board uh, with our message, uh, I think that we will be able to change the government's positions. The government's position right now seems to be that, um, that uh, you know, we'll look at a total emission as far as uh, Canada's efforts and, uh, you know, they got plans for the next few years to be shutting down uh, three or four um, coal-fired power plants, um, thus lowering the emissions there and allowing them to be a little more flexible on the, on the tar sands emissions. Um, I don't think it's going to be enough. And I think the players in the industry are going to have to step up. Um, and I think they will. We argued uh, for years, and since Kyoto, that the government has to regulate. If the government's regulate, they come forward and they get it done. If it's left for the industry to self-regulate, it's not going to happen. And we saw um, some evidence of that just a few years ago when uh, the provincial government of Alberta uh, suggested that they were going to legislate the tailing spawns. And uh, since then, uh, one, one company has already covered, you know, rec reclaimed two of its spawns and has changed the whole technology around the process for extracting the oil which will um, eventually have no tailing ponds whatsoever, uh, continual reuse of the water, uh, so on and so forth. So by legislating, we force them into uh, doing the right things, and that's what we're asking the government to do. Develop a strategy that, that um, gets us there. And do you think that workers uh, and members of your union are conscious of the, the climate change issue and are energized by it? And do you think that they're working together effectively with environmental groups to tackle these kinds of problems? Well, I don't think it's fair to ask uh, uh, workers individually to be part of that. Uh, I think it's fair that you ask if the leadership of the local is doing that, and I can stand here and say we are. And we're communicating with our membership and we're telling our membership that we're taking this position and we're not getting any, um, any kind of uh, pushback from our members. Seriously, our members feel guilty that they're earning a living um, um, in, a, in an industry that the world is saying is, is bad. Uh, so my focus here is to try to change that a bit so we can uh, you know, find a balance between, uh, between the good and the bad. Right now it seems like uh, the positions from industry and government is uh, we want it all, no impediments. And from the other side, we want nothing, like shut it down. And I'm here for us to try to find a balance in between there, at least until we do that transition uh, to something different. Roland, thank you so much for speaking to us. Right. No problem.